Yay, David, what's up? <laughs> Lori, long time no see. It's been it's been so long. What has it been? An hour? <laughs> it's been an hour, but in person, it's been all quarantine. It has been a very long time since I have physically seen you. How are you? How are you doing? We're good. Well, let me let me preface that by I've been inside for 10 weeks with uh, three little kids under five. Mm. So it depends on the day. <laughs> you, I've, I've seen you've done some stuff at home with maybe some flipping and uh, maybe a dog getting in the way. So we yeah, have the I same. Was <laughs> I was trying to do a couple beam routines, maybe keep myself moving. And my dog had other plans, which I was totally okay with. But since you're home with kids, you're basically saying you haven't slept in 11 weeks. <laughs> no. Hey, my kids sleep great, which has been awesome. But I have, so my wife and I, we made the decision. She's always wanted to be a mom and she's wanted to stay home with kids. Yeah. I have been able to taste what she has been doing for the past five years, the last 10 weeks. And it's maybe one day, Lori, if you have kids, I'm going to just call you one day and be like, Hey, breathe, let it go. You know, you'll be good. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I know that we had like a little frozen conversation. We were actually doing a little frozen sing off. We just kept sing sending videos back and forth. Mm -hmm. So when are we sending our next video? Because I know uh, I, I won the last round. I definitely did. Well, I don't know because I have my two year old with me belting at the top of the lungs. I, I think the internet might decide. No, they, they still love you. So Lori will win every time, maybe. Not nah, your kids are adorable. So now I got I to gotta have a secret weapon, but. <laughs> <laughs> so for those uh, who are listening, I, of course, know your story. Um, but for everybody watching, would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do it sh in a short version. But um, it's it's been a dream of mine to go to the Olympics since I was seven years old. And I was super ambitious as a kid, worked uh, extremely hard and was very competitive. Um, eventually started this sport called diving after my uh, gymnastics career and worked hard enough that I got to the 2008 games. All I wanted um, when I was seven years old, because I saw it on TV, I wanted to be famous uh, and I thought the Olympics could do that for me. And I wanted to be uh, wealthy and just, just American dream, like health, wealth, and happiness. And I realized at the end of my 2008 games that my focus was so much on this destination that I thought the Olympics were was going to bring that I, I got lost in the fact that it was all about a journey. And so the Olympics is supposed to be like one of the most exhilarating and most fun things you'll ever do or dream of. And at the 2008 games, I left the, the games like that was it. Um, and so I didn't accomplish the goals that I wanted. Um, left heartbroken and for the next year um, just dove into a huge depression. Um, I was 19 years old, didn't know any answers to life's hard questions and just started contemplating like my purpose. My, why, am I, why am I here? Where am I going? And what am I supposed to be doing? I think that's, um, that's very telling. I think everybody knows how big the Olympics is. And so to actually go there and to be disappointed, that's, that says a lot. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that, that you go for something and you forget that it's actually about the journey there. Once you get there, right. it's, it's like the upside down. It's like a, another parallel universe. So now, uh, when you are going through, whether it's another depression spell or even in the past that you've, you've kind of seen yourself at a low point, What's something that at least you've noticed has brought you out? Um, you know, I think there's four things that I always like to say. Just um, I think the four things are kind of more for me speaking my truth um, to get me out of it. But I think they're super applicable. Um, but I think one of the hardest things for people, especially for myself, was like I'm I was an Olympian. I'm supposed to be the best of the best. And I'm supposed to, I guess, on the surface, look like I have it all together. Um, and that's like I'm a human being. And so I think one of the hardest things for me was to admit that I was struggling or something was affecting me because it showed weakness and Olympians aren't supposed to be weak, but um, at the end of the day, we are, and it's okay to. And I, so I think that was the biggest thing for me was taking that step of being vulnerable to somebody else and asking for help. Um, I know that 
throughout a bunch of different times that I've been struggling, I kind of same as you, I, I didn't really want to talk about it. It felt like no. this taboo feeling, even though I literally grew up with my mom being a social worker, my sister's now a therapist. Um, so mental health is, is pretty open here, but I still had this big guard up. But as soon as I let everybody in and I talked about it, I felt this big weight kind of fall off my shoulder. 